This is Hemet. And Jessica. And you're listening to the Friendly Atheist Podcast. Please go to patreon.com slash friendly atheist podcast to give us all of your Christmas gifts. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. Okay, Hemet, say your sad stories. All right. All right. We're going to start with, ah, uh, let's talk about this one. Mm-hmm. Ravi Zacharias. Do we, we've talked about him a little bit before. Do you remember the name? Not at all. Okay. He is a Christian apologist. He's a guy who spent his entire career, decades long career, writing books and all that, trying to convince people Christianity is true through logic and reason. And um, I will say part of me kind of appreciates that anyone who can do that does do that because they're grappling with those questions and trying to say, no, there is a reason I believe this stuff. It's not faith alone. I have evidence behind it. It's not that they're convincing. It's that they're trying or they're at least trying to play by the same rules that atheists try to bring up. So this guy was known as a Christian apologist. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, It's not appealing to me, but whatever. Um, He got in a kerfuffle a few years ago, which I think we talked about on here because he had embellished his resume. He was calling himself Dr. Zacharias. He would get introduced before speeches as Dr. Zacharias. Yeah. You think he earned a doctorate in something somewhere and he never did. He was an, he got an honorary doctorate um, from some Christian schools. And that's a nice award, I guess. But again, you're not a doctor then. So that was one thing. He also said he had like, he was a visiting scholar at Oxford. And it's like, dude, you went to like a Christian seminary thing that was on Oxford's campus. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, I remember this. You're lying about this. Oxford would not say you were a scholar at Oxford. They, they do not like claim you, sir. That's right. And so anyway, that was one thing, but whatever. That's not a new scandal. It's happened to plenty of people of all stripes before. Then a couple of years ago, there was a scan- that not long after that, there was another scandal involving like a sexting thing where some woman um, who uh, his side of the story is that some woman wouldn't stop leaving him alone. She was sending him explicit photos on his phone. He never met her privately um, and he wanted her to stop. She wouldn't stop. And then according to him, her and her husband were trying to get money out of him in order to keep this uh, a secret. And her side of the story is that they met him at a conference, which is true. And that uh, he invited her and her husband to like be with him, be near him. And uh, the husband says he basically knew that she respected him and liked him. So he got really close to her. She confided in him and it became more explicit over time. And ultimately like he's taking advantage of this and he's the one who solicited photos from her and they tried to file a lawsuit. And anyway, I'm not going to get into, I, there's nothing to get into It's a He said, she said that sort of thing, Uh but both sides settled this out of court And with the understanding, we don't know if any money exchanged hands. What we do know is that there was a non-disclosure agreement. So no one's talking about this anymore. Okay. And so that's kind of where that left off. So it's like, well, what do you want us to make of this? That's a little weird. But every side kind of went to their respective camps because this is done with now. Sure. Okay. So this guy, Ravi Zacharias, died in May. Um, It was cancer. Uh, It happened during the pandemic, but it was cancer. He died. And then after that, it turns out there was an atheist YouTuber named Steve Bauman. And Steve is the first guy who really said, hey, this guy's lying about his resume. Kind of broke the door wide open on this stuff. Uh And he said, hey, guess what? Ravi Zacharias has a side hustle. He owns two uh, health spas, massage spas, parlors in Georgia, which... I guess not that weird. Like if you're rich, you invest in side businesses. That's not unusual. I don't know what rich people do. Yeah. Yeah. So he said a couple of the women who worked there said, uh, what did he say? They were sexually out of control. He was sexually out of control with the female therapists over whom he had professional power. Uh Oh, so I didn't know how 
seriously to take all that because of the source not that i don't trust steve but it's like well you're not showing me who these women are they want to remain anonymous sure um it's coming from you it's not necessarily coming from a reporter that i know has a long track record in this so i wasn't sure how much seriously to take it but one thing steve bauman said is listen if you're a reporter and you want to do this i'll give you the information i have talk to me and one actually did um, Daniel Silliman at Christianity Today ended up speaking, I assume, with Steve and then with the women at these places. And Christianity Today is an evangelical publication. Right. Daniel eventually published a piece saying with three women on the record, he said, we know who they are. We vetted them. We know their job history. They did work here. But they want to remain anonymous. They don't want to be harassed. They don't want to be known for this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he said, according to them, uh, Zacharias, and I'm quoting, touched them inappropriately, exposed uh -oh. himself, and masturbated during regular treatments over a period of about five years, unquote. Uh, one woman said he pleasured himself 50 times in front of her, <gasps> in addition to propositioning her. Oh, dang. Okay, so all that came out. Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, which is the longtime ministry of his, they still exist, even though he is gone. Um, and it's run by his family members, which again, eh, not great, but that's not necessarily Trump sh level shady. Sure. Um, but the ministry said like, well, we deny it, but we will hire people to investigate the matter, which, hmm. you know, how seriously do you want to take it when right. a ministry says, yeah, we'll, inv that's the Catholic church saying we'll investigate ourselves. <laughs> right, Whatever. right. They'll shuffle so, papers I, around me like, I don't know, I couldn't exactly. find anything. That was my fear. And so what was weird is that this week they actually put out a statement regarding their investigation, which okay. I was not expecting. <laughs> and here's what they basically said. We hired a law firm to look into this. I should say the law firm is not known for doing a uh, sexual abuse sort of investigation. So that was like, that's red flag right okay. there. <laughs> but they said we hired a law firm. They're not done with their investigation, but they released a preliminary report. And they shared that with us. And we're going to share it with all of you. Okay. And I was surprised they published that because here's a section of what it said. This is from the lawyers who said we contracted with private investigators and we are still working on this. It's not going to be done until January, maybe February. Uh -huh. But this is from the lawyers. While some of the massage therapists we have tried to interview are not willing to share their experiences with us, many have spoken candidly and with great detail. Hmm. Combining those interviews with our review of documents and electronic data, we have found significant, credible evidence that Mr. Zacharias engaged in sexual misconduct over the course of many years. Well. Some of that misconduct is consistent with and corroborative of that which is reported in the news recently. Huh. And some of the conduct we have uncovered is more serious. Really? Yeah. So they posted that. And then the ministry added, we are heartbroken at learning this, but feel it is necessary to be transparent and to inform our staff, donors, and supporters at this time, even while the investigation continues. Okay. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um. I'm kind of curious what else they're going to uncover that we don't already know. Um, I should also point out that members of the ministry, because they have a board, they have people who have worked, they have a staff. A couple of them have spoken out in recent weeks saying, we quit, we're leaving. The wow. senior leader, I'm paraphrasing here, but the senior leadership has been lying to us. They kind of said, we believe the women speaking out and we don't like how the people in charge of the ministry, including his family, are basically trying to dismiss everything as if it's all persecution. And okay. they're like, we feel like you're not telling us everything and we're part of the leadership here. And so we're quitting. Like, we don't want to be a part of this anymore. And they're seeing the writing on the wall and they're trying to get out. And I don't know if, I don't know if they're exiting was kind of the reason the ministry said, we need to share this. Like we can't hide this. Uh -huh. I don't know if that was the reason, but it the chron the chronology there is certainly telling. So I don't know. I don't know what happens now. The ministry, Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, is a multi million dollar organization. They haven't uh -huh. re publicly released their nonprofit nine nineties, which tells you how much money they have, uh -huh. which any good nonprofit does release privately. 
if not, I mean, you have to file it with the IRS, but you don't have to release it publicly. Okay. They have not released it publicly since 2015. And by the way, some of the people who left the organization said, why aren't we doing that? We should be. We have nothing to hide. Like, show people how much we make. Show people where it's going. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, like, but they have millions of dollars. What do you do? What do they do? If it comes back and we learn Ravi Zacharias did everything everyone's accusing him of doing, um, I mean, my suggestion, I think they should shut down. I think I don't care about their I don't care about the jobs if you're working at a place like that necessarily. I don't know. Um, I know they're not all to blame yeah. for what he did. I know most of them didn't know he was doing any of this. But like I don't right. know that they should be like sad at losing that job in particular. That said, I mean donate the money to nonprofits that work with abuse victims, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't know what they do from here. A formal apology to the women that they basically dismissed for years. To the right. couple, the married couple who, oh, by the way, I didn't say this. The married couple that said, we want to tell our side of the story, but we had, we signed an NDA with the settlement with Ravi Zacharias. Mm. They said the ministry still will not release us from the NDA. Really? So we can't talk about this anymore, which now that we know about this massage parlor thing, like I, I kind of want to hear better. their story. Yeah. Um, I will say they have shared their story online, but not through any, uh, like Official. not through any, yeah, exactly. Not through any official means and certainly not like under oath or anything like that. And they should, they ended up doing it after he died. Cause they're like, screw it. We're just kind of coming out and saying, it. can you, <clears throat> uh, can you walk me through the timeline again? So um, he, after he died in May, okay, um, so he died in May. And yeah, then the they, story that Steve Bauman released hinting that something bad is happening at these massage parlors was uh, August or September, I think. Okay. And, um, and that's and when the, they started digging in. Yeah, and the Christianity Today article that spoke with them came out at the end of September. Hmm. And again, the there's nothing wrong with their journalism in that sense. Like, I, no one said, like, nope, Christianity Today is lying about it. No. Right. Um, that was at the end of September. And since then, that's when the investigation started. So it's been about three months. I'm really curious what his death had to do with, like kicking all of this off you know what i mean like yeah i don't know i don't know live would they have done the exact same thing or was it just now that he's dead he can't put up blockades for us or whatever yeah. That's interesting. it's a good question i don't know um i've heard some criticism online like why y'all kicking this guy's reputation when he's dead like it's right. disrespectful but also Which no i don't agree with at all but like and it's not like anyone was waiting until he died to to trash him. It's right. now now we know about it. It wouldn't mm -hmm. matter if he was alive or dead. Like the story's out. It's it's we should investigate it. And again, um, well, massage parlor aside, like these things go to the heart of his ethics that he sure. espoused. So it seems like that's a far cry from yeah, um, yeah. So disturbing story. I yeah. I don't know how it's going to end. It's definitely one I'm following because as far as like Christian apologists go, he's one of the the few people, him, like Lee Strobel, who wrote all those Case for Christ books. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a few that, and William Lane Craig, who does a lot of debates. There's a handful of them that have, if you're in atheist circles that likes debating this stuff, mm -hmm. that has discussed this stuff online, or you read books about it, those names pop up over and over. He was one of them. And so it's like, this isn't a nobody in the world of debating theology, God's existence, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So interesting <laughs> story.